How do we enter a year thinking about the unthinkable when our prayers take on a meaning like we've never experienced before? This year, when we open up our Moxor and we read the words, who will live and who will die, who will have a long life and an untimely end, who by water, who by fire, who by sword and by beast, by famine and by thirst, by earthquake, by plague, who will have a life that is peaceful, who will have a life that is troubled, who will be safe in their home, and who will be pursued, who will be serene and who will be tormented, who will be impoverished and wealthy, who will be brought to the lowest of lows, and who will be lifted to great heights. It's not from the news, it could be. It's not from our feeds and our emails and our calls, even some of our friends and even within our own home and our families. It's from our Moxor, thousand years. Dr. Erica Brown writes that the words that we say on Yom Kippur do not change from year to year, but their context does. The prayers are our emotional anchor for an entire day given over to considering our own instability and change and for that of our world. So as we gather this year on our most solemn night, Kol Nidre, when we renew our vows to ourselves, our vows to God, to Israel, to the Jewish people, and to each other, we look around this congregation and we also look inside ourselves as we lay bare our challenges and our struggles, our scars, our failures, and our fears, and also our successes, both personal and communal. Tonight is the night that we can admit to ourselves we are not okay. We began tonight by reciting Kol Nidre, the legal formula which annuls our vows, because this has been a year with broken vows and promises. We promise to keep each other safe. We promise to stay united. We promise to bring them all home. We've worn blue squares and yellow ribbons, hostage dog tags around our necks and over our hearts, vowing my heart is in captivity in Gaza. We've worn bracelets and pendants with the promise that we will dance again. And today we say, Slicha, I'm sorry. We beat our chest knowing that we couldn't keep every promise that we made this year. We don't really imagine that the meaning of our lives will be decided on in the next few hours. We come here often as distant participants, but quickly the prayers get personal. We realize this, that the prayers are actually speaking about me. Who will live and who will die Perhaps that's why we begin by annulling our vows so that we can admit the truth that we haven't fulfilled all those promises and that we need an opportunity to begin again. The words of the prayers, Kol Nidre and Una Tana Tokef, take on new meaning this year and echo how so many of us feel. They may make our knees buckle, our heart ache, and send shivers down our backs. Who will live and who will die? Who poor, who in wealth? Who alone, who with community, who will face an unexpected medical diagnosis, who will face unemployment, a marriage that's falling apart, mental health crisis, a serious issue with a family member, or our own heartbreaking loss. We come here tonight to confront, confront the reality that life is unpredictable and can be scary, that for much as we think we control our lives, we most certainly don't. And for 25 hours, we recognize our vulnerability, our mortality, and the precariousness of life. We hope also that we gain a deeper insight that life is truly precious and that our lives are precious. We come face to face with the truth that each moment might be our last. And therefore, we must waste no more time. We must make the most of each day to live with purpose, with integrity, and begin that right now, tonight. As Rabbi Sharon Brous writes in an essay on the Unatana Tokev prayer, it compels us to ask, if my life ended right now, would my life have been worthwhile? 
these high holidays, yamim no ra'im, which can also be translated as days of terror, are the first in a world that has been utterly changed since last Simchas Torah with the brutal attacks of October 7th and the ensuing war and 101 hostages still in captivity. The first since we've seen an increase even more in hatred spewed in our children's high schools right here on the east side of Cleveland, I've seen it, on our college campuses. And just this week in a local high school directed towards one of our own synagogue children in sixth grade. We've seen it on our neighborhood streets, at city and county council meetings. Will we look away this year with indifference or will we stand up and speak out? Our true message that we receive on Yom Kippur is that we must confront the unpredictable trajectory of our lives and that we must live as if every single day may be our last. So for the next 25 hours, will we go through the motions like years past, beat our chests and perform the rituals by rote, thinking about life and death as a metaphor, a poetic tool, something abstract that isn't close to us. But our Yom Kippur prayers speak to us differently and expose our fears, give voice to the urgent, real, and terrifying questions we ask ourselves when we constantly check the news. Are we safe? Is Israel safe? Are our children safe? Who will live and who will die? These few sentences in our prayer book are where we pour out the story of our year and of our lives. This is where this year we will pour out anguish, cry over our losses, grieve individually and collectively as a congregation. And the open-ended text of those questions, who, 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 meets the unavoidable meaning that each of us will read into it. We know that who, we tremble when we hear it, because who will be that who this year? Yagil Yaakov is 12 years old, or at least he was on October 7th. He's now 13. Yagil grew up on kibbutz near Oz on the Gaza border. He was taken hostage by terrorists on October 7th and released after 50 days, five zero days in captivity. His father was murdered and his body is still being held in Gaza. This is what now 13-year-old Yagil said, quote, my life was destroyed a year ago. My life was a paradise in the middle of the desert with fields and the most beautiful sunsets in the land of Israel in near Oz. Live your life as if there's no tomorrow. This is a 13-year-old. Live your life as if there's no tomorrow because tomorrow life can be destroyed in seconds. Live your life as it is your last moment because my father lived that way until his last moment. The Unitanatok of prayer, who will live and who will die, ends with a prescription for all of us to live life as if there is no tomorrow. And it ends this way. But teshuva, repentance. But tefillah, prayer. But tzedakah have the ability to avert the severity of the decree. Our moxer gives us three means that we can each better our lives. As we question how those that suffer the most, those people that suffered this year, they seem like they're always the best people. I don't know if you feel that way. The nicest people have some of the most difficult lives, and that's very hard to grapple with. And if you know from October 7th, those that live on the Gaza border, they were the ones who sought coexistence to the highest level. The truth is that these three prescriptions can't save us from cancer. They can't save us from terrorists. There's no promise that these three can nullify any personal danger. But we are not powerless. That is what the Machsor teaches us, and that's what life teaches us. Through these three, we can persevere. We can overcome. We can make new vows, and we can be inscribed and sealed in that book of life. Since the first of Elul 40 days ago, we've been working to perfect ourselves, to identify our strengths, our positives, as well as our weaknesses. We've sought to repair relationships in order to better ourselves and redefine our core values and our mission. 
That's what we call teshuva. Holocaust survivor and author Viktor Frankl taught that teshuva means this, quote, I may not choose what happens to me in my life, but my character is always mine to control. We always have the power to decide what it means to be us. Tonight, we have an urgency to transform and change to decide what it means to be us. In the Mishnah in Perkei Avot, Rabbi Yehuda Anasi says, Ezo hi derech yisharash yavor la'adam. What is the correct path that a person should take in their lives? Rabbi Tamar Elad Applebaum comments with these words. We ask ourselves, what is worth doing with one's life? The answer, she says, number one, become a person, and number two, become a Jew. Understand your responsibility for the destiny of the Jewish people. For being Jewish is a gift, it's an obligation, it's also a burden, and it's a blessing. The second prescription is tefillah, prayer. We are starting a 25-hour prayer marathon, and I mean it. You know it. Patterning our Jewish life is marked by prayer three times a day, at least 100 blessings a day. And ever since October 7th, there has been a Jewish surge with growing interest in Judaism, identifying Jewish, living Jewish, lighting Shabbos candles, making challah, wearing stars of David necklaces, praying together, learning together. We've seen that surge here right at B'nai Yishurin. Perhaps you're already a part of it, or maybe you want to join the surge. Today is about renewing our vows, kol nidre, recommitting to Jewish practice, to Israel, to community, to Torah, and to God. For our feelings of vulnerability are also mixed with feelings of solidarity. We actually feel like we've never been stronger as a congregation, which is kind of ironic, given everything that's happened in our world. Our disillusionment is mixed with moral clarity and a sharpening sense of kinship. The truth is that B'nai Yishron right now, we have more conversion students interested in joining the Jewish people, even in the face of rising anti-Semitism and anti-Israel hate, than ever. Perhaps more, perhaps because of it. More couples that want to incorporate pro-Israel moments into their weddings and all their other simchas I've done weddings where couples have used the Israeli flag as their chuppah. More members are lighting candles, learning with us in classes. And just a few weeks ago, I had a baby naming for a little cute baby named Esther. The family turned to me as we were about to name the baby and said, we want to add a middle name to Esther. She was a beautiful, she is a beautiful redheaded girl. She's a gingy, is what we call her in Hebrew. And her father looked at me and said, when I look at her, I think of those little red-headed babies and kids that are being held in Gaza, the Bibas kids, Kfir and Ariel. I want to give her the middle name of Ariel for Ariel Bibas. And that's what we did. We named little baby Esther Ariel with the hopes that Ariel Bibas and his family will return home and that this little single act can help that. Journalist and social media influencer Chen Mazik explains, what our community is enduring is not the pain of death, but it's the pain of a broken bone. The thing about a broken bone, though, is after it heals, the sight of that break becomes the strongest part of the bone. While the world tells us that we are hated, we've come together as a community whose bones are stronger than ever. We're hurting, but we're also healing. And the pain that we are feeling is the pain of choosing life. And I'll add the pain to choosing to be proud Jews. On this day of words, of vows, of oaths, of prayers, this is a day of introspection. We can shut out the noise of the world and hear only the essential message that we believe that words matter, they have consequence, and we fervently hope that our prayers today and for the coming year will be answered very soon. The third prescription is tzedakah, righteous acts. The Lubavitcher Rebbe taught that there are moments in every spiritual life when we lose faith and hope, so what should we do? The Rebbe said this. His advice was to simply perform one selfless act of goodness. One act. This is tzedakah. And when you do that one act, 
that can begin to transform our world one act at a time. Similarly, Talia Engelhart understands that tzedakah may not necessarily save our lives, but that it has the power to remove the burden that we carry by creating a cycle of positive decrees. Through doing single acts of kindness that are joined together, unified, that can lift up the burden for others and bring more light and hope into this world. So with numerous acts of chesed and kindness, we see that happening in Israel and here around the Jewish world, there is a lightening and a lifting of the load. So how can we fulfill the vows that we make on Kol Nidre? Maybe it can be like Gali and Ben, who embody resilience and hope. Ben, Ben, Yamim, and Gali Siegel were engaged the week before October 7th, and they bought tickets to celebrate their engagement to the Nova Music Festival, and they invited their friends and family to come and celebrate with them. Ben is a professional soccer player, or better, football in Israel, in the Tier 2 League. Gali is an architecture and interior designer. Gali and Ben were two of the lucky ones, survivors of the Nova Festival attack. The same wasn't true for all their friends. As they were running on October 7th for their lives in that open desert, fleeing the attack, they hid in the back of a roadside bomb shelter. As you know from other stories, the terrorists not only fired guns into those shelters, but also threw grenades. They both were injured. Gali and Ben lost consciousness and were left for dead. Later, they regained consciousness, realized that they both lost their right legs, which were blown off by grenades. As I said, they were the lucky ones. They were in shock. They worked to calm each other down, make tourniquets, and await rescue. They made a vow there that they would set a wedding date. They would walk down the aisle, and they would have a first dance, saying to each other, we will dance again. After a long road of recovery, including life-threatening infections on their amputated limbs, it took them months to learn how to walk with their matching prosthetic legs. Ben is now playing soccer in an amputee football league. And this summer, at the end of July, surrounded by family, friends, and the medical team that saved their lives and taught them how to walk and supported them, Gali and Ben walked down the aisle, hand in hand, and they danced. They fulfilled their vows to each other. These Nova Festival survivors danced again. So tonight, on this day of vows, we pledge not to waste another minute. We renew our vows. We make our promise to God, to ourselves, to our families, to our community, to Israel, and to the Jewish people. What vows will you take on this year? What commitments will you renew to change, to face these challenges, to bring them all home, to dance again? The time is now for us to decide to take the vows so that we can be better and we can make our world better. In the words of 13-year-old Yagil, live your life as if there is no tomorrow, because tomorrow life can be destroyed in seconds. Live your life as it is your last moment, because it was for my dad. May this fast be meaningful. May it end with a tekiah gadola like we've never heard before to bring them all home. May we all be sealed in the book of life for a year of peace and health. Am Yisrael Chai.